So now we are going to look at two other techniques to answer such generic wildcard queries. Um, again, just to remind you about the flow, what are we trying to do here? We are trying to answer wildcard queries. And what we have seen is that among the three possible dictionary implementations, it's the B-tree implementation of a dictionary that can handle wildcard queries, right? So we are assuming, whenever we talk about wildcard queries, we'll be assuming a B-tree. So let's look at the third solution now. Again, remembering the flow of uh, this chapter, we have looked at two different solutions or two different ways of answering wildcard queries. One was by adding a second reverse B-tree. Uh, that can't, uh, uh, that can also be modified to handle extra wildcards. Again, the approach will be similar. You can, you can eliminate all other wildcards, just treat it as X star Y, use the second B-tree to solve the problem and then filter out the results that you get based on which of the terms match the uh, longer pattern or not. Okay, and something similar was being done using the second solution which was a permit term index. Now we're going to look at a third solution called a bigram index and uh, in terms of its importance this is more important than a permit term index because uh, a bigram index or more generally a k-gram index is going to be used also in the context of spelling correction. So this is solution number three for answering wildcard queries. Again, the overall approach is going to be similar. We are going to have two steps. Okay, we're going to have two indexes. The first will be the standard inverted index and the second will be a k-gram index. And we are going to first look, take the query, transform it in some way, look up the k-gram index, get a, get a bunch of terms, and then use those terms and then look up the standard inverted index to get the list of documents that answer the query. So, what is a k-gram? Okay, before we look at what a k-gram index is, what is a k-gram? A k-gram is just a sequence of k characters in a word. Right? So, let's take an example. Suppose k is equal to 2 in which case we just call it a bigram. So if we look at a word like April, so there are the bigrams that are uh, that, that are contained in the word April are basically these. You just look at the characters two at a time. So A, P, P, R, R, I and I, L. These are the characters in April, two at a time. And we also add a dollar sign both at the beginning and at the end of every word. So the first bigram by definition will be dollar $A and the last one will be L dollar. Similarly, the bigrams for the word is will be dollar $I, IS and S dollar. So like that, we will generate bigrams out of every, for every term in the, uh, you can say in the standard inverted index or equivalently in the corpus. Every, for every term, we'll create all the different bigrams or k-grams in general. Right? So if k was 3, then the first trigram of April would have been dollar $AP. Second one would have been APR. Third one would have, would have been PRI and so on. Now what is a bigram index? Or what is a k-gram index? Let's again assume that k is equal to 2. This is an index where the dictionary, so the dictionary part of a k-gram index contains all possible k-grams generated from the terms. Okay, by terms I mean the terms in the original corpus or in the standard inverted index. Okay, the terms that make up the standard inverted index 
those are the terms from which you extract all the possible k grams and you store them in the dictionary of the biogram index so the dictionary part of the biogram index contains all possible biograms generated from the terms and the postings list for every biogram okay, so for a particular entry in the dictionary or for a particular biogram in the dictionary the postings list will contain all the terms containing that biogram so for example if the biogram AP was found in a term like April it would have also been found in a word like Apple it would have also been found in a word like map then when we look at the postings list for AP in the biogram index that postings list is going to contain all these terms it's going to contain an entry for April it's going to contain an entry for Apple it's going to contain an entry for map and so on in the postings list and for reasons that you will just see we will assume that the postings list for these terms are going to be sorted in lexicographic order just as the postings list in a standard inverted index are sorted in increasing order of doc IDs in the permutum index there was only a single entry in the postings list so there's no question of ordering there but here because every entry in the postings list of a biogram index or a k-gram index can contain multiple terms we are again going to talk about an ordering and in particular a lexicographic ordering so this is the structure of uh, the, bi the, the biogram index so let's now see how we can answer a query here's a diagrammatic representation of the biogram index again so here we've taken a query uh, a term like moon broken it up into biograms dollar m m o and o n and there'll also be another term called n dollar dollar m contains the postings list for dollar m contains all the terms which start with m the postings list for m o contains all the terms that contain the biogram mo and again they are all in lexicographic order every postings list is sorted in lexicographic order now let's look at a wildcard query like mon star just as we broke up every term into a sequence of, into a bunch of biograms we will do the same kind of processing on a query so we know that the first three letters of the query are MON so we can generate biograms for this part of the query we can say that dollar M is going to be the first biogram MO is going to be the next one and ON is going to be the, the next one so if we look at this particular query in the biogram index note that dollar m is an entry in the dictionary of the biogram index and the postings list for it contains all terms which start with an m the postings list for this contains all the terms which contain an mo so if we do this kind of a bool if we execute this kind of a boolean query on the biogram index what will be the result it will be all terms starting with M and containing MO and containing ON okay so here's a question for you are you going to get any false positives here by false positive I mean is it the case that every single example of a term which satisfies this uh, uh, this condition is also going to satisfy the query 
clearly any term that satisfies this query is going to satisfy this expression, right? It's going to start with an M, it's going to contain the biogram MO, and it's going to contain the biogram ON. So every term that satisfies this pattern is going to be returned to us by this Boolean query on the biogram index. But note that just because there is a term that starts with an M and contains MO and contains ON does not necessarily mean that um, it satisfies this query. The reverse is not true. We can get false positives. And uh, to see that example, let's say, uh, let's take the word Mormon. So this is a word that starts with an M. It contains the biogram MO. It also contains the biogram ON. But it doesn't satisfy this query. So again, what we need to do is we need to take the results that are returned by the biogram index, which will be a list of terms. And we must filter them against the pattern of the query. And we should take only the surviving terms which satisfy this pattern and then look them up in the actual standard inverted index and take the OR. By the way, I mentioned that the terms <coughs> in the postings list of a biogram index need to be lexicographically sorted and that's because we need to execute these Boolean queries, right? We need to take the intersection of these various lists and the intersection of operation obviously will be uh, doable in linear time only if the lists are sorted. That was the reason. Now this will take uh, less space compared to the permit term index because now we don't we are not storing every possible rotation of a term. We are only storing all the possible biograms or trigrams or whatever the value of k you fix and all the terms which contain those biograms. So um, it's not going to be as I mean of course you'll end up using a lot more space than you were earlier. But compared to permit term index, this is uh, you know, this takes up less space. So again, you know, we can take a query like uh, x star y. How would we answer this query using a biogram index? Again, you generate biograms, all possible biograms of this prefix, is starting with dollar, whatever the first character is, and you know, the next two characters and so on. And you also take, you also take all the biograms in this, in this particular suffix y dollar. And you also, and, and you create this large conjunctive Boolean query containing all the biograms. You look them up in the biogram index and then you filter the results again based on whether they satisfy this pattern or not. So that's the thing about biogram indices that you have to, this filtering step is necessary for every query because you can always get some false positives. But again, as you can see, because we, we have this extra index that we are storing, we are looking up this extra index, the biogram index, before we look up the standard in, inverted index. This is going to be expensive. Okay, so whether you implement it, uh, whether you implement wildcard queries using permutum indices or biogram indices, computationally your IR system will need to do a lot more work. And so what we do is, uh, what search engines do is, they don't allow you to, uh, they hide the facility of wildcard search in advanced search so that somebody who's just using the search engine doesn't lazily type in wildcard queries, right? somebody could be searching for a book on Python programming and instead of typing Python programming they may feel lazy and say well, maybe let me let maybe I can just use a wildcard query so I'll just say PYTH star and PROG star and hopefully the first few results will be 
on books corresponding to Python programming. So if you encourage laziness, people will respond. And that's the reason they don't actually uh, display the option of wildcard search right on the front page. Now, early search engines used to do that. They, in fact, used to explicitly write at the bottom, type your search terms, use star if you need to. For example, Alex star will <clears throat> match Alexander. If you do, if you, you if you if you actually invite users to be lazy and use wildcard operators, then a lot of them are going to do that. But then you will need to do a lot more work to answer those queries. So, if you've heard of search engines like Alta Vista, for example, um, they used to have this kind of an interface. Okay, but nowadays web search engines uh, do allow certain restricted kinds of wildcard queries. But again, they are available only in advanced search, and you need to do a lot. Uh, you know, you, you need to be uh, a fairly sophisticated searcher in order to be able to use those options.